What's up, divine beings? Peace, love, abundance, blessings. This is Astro Poppy, and I'm going to talk about connecting with the Orisha as a non initiate. And I know this video is going to cause some controversy. I know some people are going to get pissed off. So it is what it is. I'm just speaking my own spiritual truth. I was called by source to talk about this video for a very long time, but I really wanted to avoid it. However, when I'm meant to do something and I just do it and I trust spirit, things always work out. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever. Let me just do this. So. First and foremost, I just set the intention that this video serves the highest good of the collective and that I am able to represent the Orisha in the best way that I can. Of course, I am just talking about representing their wisdom, their love, and their care. All right. So here's the thing, y'all. The Orisha are divine beings. They are representations of the elements. And they have had human experiences they are elevated beings. They are divine beings who embody what it's like to be a person who goes through hardship, who goes through pain, and who finds themselves through that. It's important to know the story of the Orisha, every single Orisha who you might be working with, because their stories show you how they go into their path of greatness. Now, the Orisha are not picked. You are not here to pick your Orisha and go vibe with them. You are here to be in your highest self, to care for yourself, and if they show up, they show up. And that is what happened to me where I wasn't looking to connect with Orisha and I was never, I never wanted to go into that territory because I know that there are religions that have done the justice of preserving the stories of these spirits. There is Santeria, and I got people in that. I got friends in that. There is Ifa. There is Lokumi. I have people in all of those communities who I value and respect. However, I just want to say this. Sometimes there are stuff that is said to protect the story, legacy, and history of these spirits. But these spirits get the final say in who they want to connect with. Again, we don't choose them. They choose us. And they make themselves known in meditations, in dreams, in visions, in symbols. This is for any spirit out there. If they want to work with you, they're going to make themselves known in spirituality and especially with connecting with the Orisha, you don't pick your Orisha. Ever. Ever. They pick you and they show up for you. All right? So, here's the thing. Spirit gets the last say. Let me just say that one more time before I go even further. Because I was somebody who was very afraid of connecting with the Orisha. I was somebody who wanted to be very respectful and not dabble into that. However, I was also somebody who would see the Orisha and the Orisha showed up for me. The Orisha protected my life and saved me through a lot. And they have saved me through things such as black magic. They have empowered me to heal and love myself. And they were there in the process of me becoming a full-time reader and I sometimes feel ashamed about the fact that I haven't given them any public credit because of the fact that this is going to be in a turf where some people in the spiritual streets are going to throw some shade. But you know what? It is what it is. I'm just here to say what I got to say. When you are connected with an Orisha, don't jump into getting an altar because the Orisha represent the elements. If you are connecting with Helegua, you go to the crossroads. You do rituals there. If you are connecting with Yemaya, she is the ocean. You go to the ocean. If you are connecting with Oya, who is a thunderstorm in cemeteries, then you go into a thunderstorm and you give offerings. She is the rain, the thunder, and the cemeteries. If you are connecting with Shango, who is lightning, you can leave offerings out in nature. If you are connecting with Oshun, go to a river. All right. And if you don't have those types of natural landscapes around you, then dedicate it somewhere in nature regardless, because in all honesty, y'all, you don't always need an altar to do work with spirits. And that's something that I do have another video on in my, in my channel 
about connecting with spirits without an altar. It's not always necessary. And quite honestly, you shouldn't jump into doing that anyway. You want to take your time with connecting with a certain guide, if it isn't a Risha or otherwise, before you just dedicate a space for them. It's almost like, yo, before I'm going to invite somebody over who I just met, I got to get to know them. All right? For me, I'm going to talk about what was my own experience because I think talking about things from a personal way is going to help people out there. And maybe if you resonate, let me know down in the comments below. I first saw Yemaya out of any spirit guide. And this was when I was spending time with somebody who is an initiate of Santeria. We went to the ocean. She showed me how to give offerings to Yemaya. And I was called then and there to give her uh, an offering. When I gave her that offering, I went back home and I cried. And Yemaya showed up for me. This was about five years ago. Yemaya showed up for me and said, you don't know it yet, but your spirit and your body is mourning the loss of certain friendships that have to go. And I remember just feeling like, how can I see her and why am I hearing this? And feeling like, wait, this isn't my turf. I, I can't. Like, who am I to connect with them? And that's when Yamaya said, don't overthink it. Like, I am here to help you. I am a divine mother. I am here to support you in your healing. And from there... I, I took in her medicine. I took in her guidance and her wisdom. And if Yemaya shows up for you, then it's about emotional healing. It's about learning to love yourself. It's about finding divine love, but also getting out of negative relationships. And Yemaya also helps you with your abundance. From there, I later on connected to Elegua. And this was years later. I was... In a position where somebody was trying to initiate me into a religion, and I'm going to be honest, although I met great people in these religions, there are some people out there who are very unethical and who misrepresent these spirits. And I remember feeling like, I don't want to be pushed into this. I don't feel like this is right. I don't really like this person. It was what it was. I just was like, this isn't for me. But this person was trying to send me spiritual work some negative spiritual work I was trying to send me a tax because I didn't want to get initiated with them. Big deal, right? Like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Who cares? But that's when Elegua showed himself to me in a dream and said, I'm going to protect you because I don't want the name of the Orisha to be misrepresented because of what one person did. And from there, Elegua showed up for me as a guide and still, still shows up for me. And I'm grateful for that. Elegua is the Orisha of the crossroads who represents endings and beginnings. Elegua is the divine messenger. He is definitely a mercurial spirit. And that's the thing, y'all. When you start knowing the Kabbalah tree of life, when you start knowing astrology, nobody wants to talk about this. And I'm sure people are going to say I'm being a pagan here. And this isn't even paganism. This is just connecting to source. This is connecting to spirit. And that's it. This isn't paganism. But you start realizing that some of these different deities and different pantheons have similar archetypal energies. That doesn't mean that they're not unique beings of their own right and respect. I'm just saying it how it is. So Alegua showed up for me and offered me protection and said, Pray to me, light candles in my name. I'm going to help you. I'm going to support you. And I'm going to protect you. All right? From there, I connected with different Orisha. And the message that I just want to leave for you is this. There is always going to be roles that are placed in spirituality. Sometimes they, go from, they come from good places. Sometimes they don't come from good places. They come from bad places. When it comes to the religions saying that you can't work with the Orisha as a non-initiate. Some people are coming from a good place because they just want to make sure that this is being respected and revered because there are also some people out there who are very ghetto in the spiritual streets who are just buying statues and thinking that they could, you know, petition a spirit for shortcuts in life. That's not how this works. If you're connecting with an Orisha or any spirit for that matter, you're connecting to a path and a walk of life to support you in your ascension your healing, and your self-development. They can bring abundance. They can bring protection. They can bring all that good stuff. But it's going to come at an investment. This is a path you're walking. This isn't easy peasy, low and breezy. All right? 
So that's really all I got for this video. It's a little short, but I just want to say this Orisha come to who they want to come to. If they come to you, connect with them if you feel okay and ready to do so. And there will be people who will say you can't do that. There will be people who will say these are trickster spirits. And how do you know it's the right Orisha? How do you know it's not? You trust your body. You trust your spirit. You trust your heart. You trust your soul. Spirituality is not about ego. And working with the Orisha is not an easy path. This is an investment and this is a journey you're making with them. But they are here to support you. They are here to nourish you. And they are here to teach you how to love yourself and be there for yourself. All right. Now, I will be doing videos on my own experiences with these Orisha, what they know, what they like. And yeah, I'm going to be talking about them in the ways in which I connect with them. Of course, there are different religions and spiritual paths out there that connect with the Orisha in their own unique way. And here's the thing. If you feel like you want to be an initiate, go ahead and be an initiate. There is nothing wrong with being an initiate in connecting with these Yoruba paths. If you want to learn with community and things of that sort. However, I'm somebody where if source comes to me, source comes to me. And these beings are representatives of source. And I don't want to get too deep out there. But how do I say this? All the spirits are real, y'all. And if they talk to you, they talk to you. It's that simple. All these pantheons are real. All these different timelines and narratives and mythologies, they're all real. All these entities are real. And if they come to you, they come to you. All you got to do is approach them with respect, love, generosity, and care. And, you know, if they give to you, you give back. You study what their offerings are. You look at that. And you get back in the ways that you can give back and be dedicated toward a long-lasting relationship. All right? That's pretty much it. There's going to be people out there who will say, yo, how do you know that's really that Orisha? And, you know, that's bad that you're doing that. And I'm just going to say this. If the Orisha wasn't fucking with me and I'm messing with them and I'm connecting with them, my whole life would be in shambles. My whole life would be in ruins. I would have terrible skin. Now, I'm just joking about that. y'all. I'm just being funny there. But what I'm trying to say is like, if somebody's, if somebody is unethically connecting with them or connecting with them when there's no connection to be made, you'll know it in their life. That's the thing with any spiritualist, y'all. Pay attention to their energy. Pay attention to their eyes. Pay attention to how their life is like. If they're really about what they're preaching, you'll notice it in their energy and their essence and how they're living. And I can say this. The Orisha helped my life. The Orisha helped me and heal and grow in so many ways. And I am everlastingly grateful to them. There are a bunch of Orisha out there. And again, they pick you. You don't pick them. That's simply how it works, all right? Well, my name is Astro Poppy. I hope this video is of service. I hope this video supports some people. I know it's going to piss some people off, and I'm open to having conversations about it, all right? It is what it is. And, you know, if the Orisha come to you, approach them with respect. And again, look at what embodiment of nature they have, that specific Orisha that comes to you has. Go to that specific place. As one thing that Arisha will tell me to do if I'm doing too many readings, they'll be like, go out in nature and go connect with us there. Altars are powerful and divine, but you know what's also powerful and divine? Connecting with nature, connecting with earth, uh, understanding that the river, the ocean, the sea, they're all spirits and they all have their own consciousness. And when you're in those spaces, they have 5D energy. They have a higher frequency. And when we're around those spaces, we feel like we're just getting cleansed. We're getting uplifted. We're getting energized. We're feeling more relaxed there. There's a divine reason why. And it's because nature is consciousness. And nature is higher consciousness. And there are spirits there supporting you, elevating you, taking care of you, and nourishing you, all right? My name is Astro Poppy. Thank you for tuning in. Let me know how you feel about this video. Let me know if you with it or against it. I'm open to having a good dialogue about this, all right? If you want to follow me on social media, how to do so is on the about below. And if you want to book a private reading, how to do so is also about, about below. In the about below, all right? Stay beautiful. Stay abundant. Stay great, y'all. I love you so much. Astro Poppy.